Kano. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, we all have different reasons for attending church Sunday morning. Sometimes we come to praise, to worship. Sometimes we come to be renewed, refreshed. Uh, this morning, I just wanted to share a word with you from Philippians chapter 4, verses uh, 6, 7, and 8. Verses 6 says, Do, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Oh, yeah. Pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank you, Lord. Then you will experience God's peace which it exceeds anything we can understand. Thank you, Lord. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And Paul goes on to say, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and holy oh, and right yep. and pure Ooh. and lovely and admirable. Thank you, Lord. Think about things that are excellent and worthy Ooh, of praise. Amen. Glory to your name. So this morning as we begin to prepare to praise and worship, let's set our minds on things that are praiseworthy. Yeah. And we know what that is, don't we? So let's open up in prayer this morning and we can clap our hands and, and raise our hands to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just thank you for another day of life, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Even though it's raining, we are just so grateful and thankful that we can come together and gather in your holy name, yes. Father. Father, we just want to praise you with our voices. We want to clap our hands and lift our hands to you, Father God. We just want to bask in your glory and your presence this morning. Father, we love you. Love we honor Lord. you. We glorify you this morning yeah. in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jason. <clears throat> so good to see you this morning, everybody. So as you know, um, Lonnie and I were traveling. And you know, uh, one of the things I think you can identify with, everybody can identify with this. When you sit in, in the airport, you think of every kind of thing that you can think of to waste time because you spend a lot of time sitting around the airport. And then you go to a certain line, then you got to sit down again. And then, and, um, and I was thinking, you know, no matter what happens at the airport, God loves me and God loves you. His love is great. And no matter what might have happened, God is good and His love is great. Even though there were things happening here, uh, you know, that we think, oh man, this is a challenge. God's love is great. And it's great in whatever circumstance. When my grandson, our grandson was here, we were, we, we were telling him, you got to memorize scripture. So we're very proud. Now if I say, hey, what's Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because God's love is great no matter what the circumstance. We're going to sing about that now. And then we're going to sing another song right after. It goes pretty quickly, but Psalm 30 says, you turn my mourning into dancing. And some of us been mourning for any number of different reasons. But we're praying to the Lord, Psalm 30, and we're, we're exclaiming, You turn my mourning into dancing again. You lifted my sorrow. We're going to sing that this morning. Now this song, I couldn't, you know, my memory is not what it used to be. But I can't remember if we ever sang it here together. Um, but the words are pretty simple. So here, I'll teach it to you first and then we'll, then we'll sing it. This song says, There's no greater love than Jesus. It says, There's no greater love than He And there's no greater love, listen to this, that frees us from where? So deep within. We'll just do it one time like that slow. There's no greater love than Jesus. And there's no greater love than He. 
Let no grant of love that frees us so deep within. Now we do it to temple. There no greater love than Jesus. There no greater love than He gives. There no greater love that frees us so deep within. Now sing, there's no greater joy. There no greater joy than Jesus. There's no greater joy than He gives. There's no greater joy that frees us so deep within. Sing again, there's no greater love. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. Here's the chorus. Praise your name, send in all of your never ending love, love so great that it covers all my sin and shame. No greater power, there is no greater force in all the earth than the strength of his love. Heart's tricky and his love endures forever. Yeah. Unchanging, always true. Hallelujah. And his love endures forever. Forever for all time. And his love endures forever. Love divine. Okay, we sing from the top, everybody. There's no greater. Okay. There's no greater love. There's no greater love than Jesus. Yeah. There's no greater love that He gives. There's no greater love that frees us. So deep within. Sing it again. There's no There's no greater love than Jesus. Oh no. There's no greater love that He gives. No. There's no greater love that frees us. So deep within. Now we sing, we praise your name, everybody. We praise your name. Send in all of your never-ending love. Love so great that it covers all my sin and shame. No greater power. There is no greater joy in all the than the strength of your love. Get ready. Here we go. And his love endures forever. A changing fall is true. And his love endures forever. Forever for all time. And his love endures forever. Love divine. Uh, here's the big ending you sing. Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. Sing it again. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Sing it again. Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. Sing it once more. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Okay, now, we just said thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Very important. Thank you. And if you haven't been re reading the blog on the website, shame on you. You should be reading it. Because if you read it this morning, you would see that Ralph Brock wrote a tremendous meditation about saying thank you so make sure we sing that one more time okay uh, and we do it with her. here we go huh? thank you for your love lord jesus thank you for your love thank you for your love lord jesus 
Thank you for your love. Sing one more. Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. And I told you we would sing Psalm 30, so just clap, clap in your hands. It's Psalm 30. You turn my morning into dancing again. It lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the Lord has come. Do it again. He's turned my morning into dancing again. It lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the Lord has come. We do it again. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the Lord has come. Do it once more. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the Lord has come. Here's the verse. Where there once was only her, he gave his healing hand. Where there once was only pain, he brought comfort like a friend. I feel the sweetness of his love piercing my darkness. I see the bright and morning sun as it ushers in his joyful gladness. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for this joy has come. Oh, oh, oh. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Here's the bridge. Your anger lasts for a moment in time. But your favor is here and will be on me for all my lifetime. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the Lord has come. Oh, oh, oh. He's turned my morning into dancing again. That's a scripture. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the joy has come. Last part. I must sing for his joy has come. I must sing for his joy has come. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's something... Uh, very medicinal, you know, spiritually, when you, you sing the scripture to the Lord. So he gives you the words, that song, Psalm 30, we sing it back to him, we clap our hands, we use our voices, all of the gifts that he gave us. Praise the Lord. Pastor Moku, can you pray for us, please? Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Lord, we never stop thanking you for our knowing that we are the true family of the God who is above all. And Father, I, we pray for your blessing over all of our brothers and sisters who stand before you. And we pray for those of, of our brothers and sisters who are still on their way, that you bring them here safely. And those who cannot come, Father, your blessings be on them. Touch their hearts that they'll know they are the true children of the God who is above all. And we thank you, Father, for these divine blessings. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And in your most righteous name, all of your children say, Amen. Amen. Malo, Pastor Moku. Let's sing to the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. 
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship you holy. Sing it that again. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. You're rich in love, we'll sing to the Lord. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. On that day, and on that day, when my strength is failing the angels near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years for Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Bling night never before, oh my soul, I worship the holy name. Just that last part, I worship your holy name. We are saying, Savior, like a shepherd's lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use, thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thy we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us Sing again in Sing again in English, Savior. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. Sing to the Lord. 
In thy pleasant pastures feed us For our use thy foes prepare Blessed Jesus Blessed Jesus Blessed Jesus Thou hast bought us thine We are Blessed Jesus Blessed Jesus Thou hast bought us song and then we'll greet one another for the praises of man I will never ever stand God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith to only a king of all kings do I bow my knee and sing give my everything only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith to only a king of all kings do I bow my knee Only my maker, my father, my savior, redeemer, restorer, rebuilder, rewarder, to only a God like you, do I give my praise. For the praises of man, I will never ever stand for the kingdom of this world. I'll never give my heart away or God my praise, my allegiance and devotion. My heart's desire in all emotion. Go to serve the man who died upon that tree. Only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith to only a king of all kings. Do I bow my knee and sing, give my everything? Only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith to only a king of all kings. Do I bow my knee and sing? Give my everything to only my maker, my father, my savior, redeemer, restorer, realder, rewarder, to only a God like you. Do I give my praise? Yes, Lord. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take the next few minutes. You can greet one another with the love of the Lord. Please be reminded that we're still in COVID-19 protocol. So if they don't want to shake your hand, you can fist bump. You can elbow tap. You can wave from across the room. Don't forget to say hi to the people out on the lanai. They want to say hi. Don't forget to go uh, on the screen so that the people on Zoom can see you too. It's going to be a tough one. be hard to break out this morning. <laughs> All right. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Oh, it's going to be a tough one to break up this morning. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We can try that one more time, one more time. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Hallelujah. I hate to break up fellowship because I know that that's exactly what God wants for all of us is to fellowship, to lift each other up, encourage one another. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing. Um, but I do have some announcements for you this morning. The first one I want to say is, um, I don't know if we've done it before in the church. i got to ask Pastor Ray or my wife, but that song, 10,000 Reasons, is like in my top five uh, list of hits. I love that song. And um, so I just wanted to let Pastor Ray know that so we can add that to the rotation. <laughs> uh, and Pastor Ray is not listening, but I did want him to know that uh, we got compliments last week from Moku Boy about our clapping. We did a great job clapping uh, while Pastor Ray was gone. Uh, so, a few announcements for you this morning, and this morning we will start with my lovely wife. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Good morning. Good morning. I don't have word for you today, but I do want to come in agreement with what Pastor Ray said and the scripture. It was, it was just um, me and Pastor Ray, I don't know, we get like some kind of spiritual <laughs> connection. Um, uh, there is a lot of things going on with people and families in this church, physically, physical things, okay? People are going in for surgeries, um, just all kinds of things. Um, I hope it's okay for me to share that. Janet, is it okay? Um, I just found out this morning, I don't know if my husband knows that he just didn't tell me, but, um... Larry, Larry. I don't know why I wanted to call him Aoki. I think it's because it's his last name. But <laughs> Uncle Larry um, has a tumor on his brain. And so please lift him and Auntie Laura up in prayer. Um, is it okay if I share, Chris? Chris is having a procedure. She's having a, a colonoscopy. Um, so please lift her up in prayer. Um, don't ever be shy, guys. That's what we're here for, to pray for one another. I'm going through my things. And you know what? Um, this past week, uh, I had a little moment. Um, I don't know if it was frustration or confusion, but uh, before I was diagnosed with the endometriosis and adenomyosis. Um, I've been bleeding in between, okay, so this is lady talk, sorry guys, bleeding in between periods for over a year. And I went to my doctor in April to see like why, and they, they, they went in with the scope and said, oh, everything looks fine. But before I went into the appointment, I prayed, as I always do. And I'm like, Lord, 
whatever issue is going on, please reveal it to the doctors, reveal it to me and your will be done. And in the stillness of me just being alone with him, he revealed to me his me, like just in a vision. And I was a little scared and I went in and they said, no, everything's fine. And I'm like, oh, praise God. And so I'm like, hmm, Lord, what was that about? And months go by, months go by, and then I start bleeding heavy. And I'm like, okay, this is, un this is new, what's going on? And we go in, they tell me what's wrong. And my option is this or hysterectomy. And so the other option is um, an IUD, which I do not like the idea of having a foreign object in my body. Um, I didn't like it. I received the pamphlet. I read the pamphlet. Didn't like it even more. <laughs> and I was like, this is not, this is not. And I was like, okay, Lord, were you revealing to me that this is what was going to happen, that I was going to have a hysterectomy? And I didn't receive an answer, but a few nights later, I couldn't go to sleep. I lied. I said I didn't have word. I have word. Okay. I couldn't go to sleep, and um, I got into my word. I, I, I went into my Bible, and it was so weird because I turned to Mark 5. And I don't know if anybody's ever read Mark 5, but that story is very specific to what I and also another sister in the church is going through right now about a woman who was bleeding for years. And she went to the doctors, she spent all her money, and she only got worse. worse. And Jesus was in a crowd, and she saw Jesus and thought to herself, if I could just touch his cloak, if I could just touch his cloak, like he don't even have to lay hands on me, he don't have to pray for me, if I could just touch his cloak, and she touched it, and she was healed. She felt her body just change, and she knew that she was healed. And Jesus turned around and said, who did that? And she said, I did. So I read that in the night, and I told my husband, my spirit felt conflicted, because I felt like the spirit was leading me in one way, and then I read this, and then I had a different feeling, and I didn't know what to make of it. And my husband told me, don't get frustrated. You are inviting him in. You are asking him to guide you, to lead you. That is exactly what he's going to do. I think he wants you to just trust in him no matter what direction he takes you. And so that is what I'm doing. I am not going to be anxious. I am not going to be worried. I am not going to get frustrated. Jesus lives in me. I don't have to touch a cloak. I am waiting for him to heal me if that is what he wants to do. If he wants to heal me naturally, Lord, let it be. If he wants to heal me through the doctors, Lord, let it be. Um, whatever direction God is leading you, whatever it is that you're going through, just have faith in him. Like Pastor Ray said, no doubt whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, God is still good. God is still in control. Let him in, let him lead you, and he will deliver you. Amen. With that being said, ladies, we meet again at the end of this month, um, October 30th, Saturday, over Zoom, to go over First and Second Samuel. One other thing, guys, my husband preached, was it last week or, or the week before, about us being the church. This is the building, yes, this is where we come to for fellowship, but we as individuals are the church. We are one body, we are a family. Um, I shared with, I think, Pastor Ray a while ago that my husband, my husband, his family is very different. They are, they are not followers of Christ and he struggles and he's trying his best to lead them and it's very difficult. Um, and my family comes to church and we still have our struggles, <laughs> okay? It's, life is not perfect because you're a Christian, 
It's acknowledging that you need Jesus. Okay, that's what being a Christian is about. Um, but he said, my family is my church family. My, my church family is my family. And I told him, you're crazy. My family is my family. That's who I was raised up with. Like, that's my family. And over the years, that has completely changed in me. I love you guys. I love my church family. It is such a blessing to be a part of your life. It's, it's such a blessing for each, I mean, to share testimony, to share stories, to be able to pray for you. I love each and every one of you. And I, I just want you to know, I don't know who it is that God wants to hear this, but <clears throat> don't be in denial, guys. Don't let what's going on in your life hinder you or your spirit. Share it. That's what the Bible tells us. Come together. Confess with one another. Share it. We can pray for you. When two or more are gathered, God's presence is there. Okay, do not hide your struggles. I love you guys. Amen, amen. Uh, so we got a few more announcements for you while you let that soak in. <laughs> our next one comes from our sister, Chris. Thank you, sister. Sister Chris, who hasn't had solid food since yesterday morning. And praise God. I was like, am I going to... I'm, I'm one of somebody who eats regularly. So... <laughs> What is that? Uh, God gives me strength. Hallelujah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so speaking of praying, on Monday, a lot of people pray. They pray every day, but they want to pray specifically for you. So let them know, you know, what procedures you're having done that you need some extra prayer for, what's going on in your life, and let them pray for you. Um, Wednesday, there will be no Bible study because we're on October break from school and uh you know we're doing some other things so we won't be here for bible study on wednesday but we will be here next week wednesday 10 uh october 20th at 5 p.m either on zoom or in person still continuing the study of the chosen awesome yes. um friday night is celebrate recovery at six o'clock in person and on zoom if you're having some denial issues go read my blog about how to get out of denial Jason was talking about you got these problems and God can set you free. Well, how does that happen? There's a way. Jesus, celebrate recovery. Uh, men's ministry is this Saturday, October 16th, 9 o'clock, in person and on Zoom. And the Saturday after that, October 23rd, from 3 to 5, we'll be at Dodo Mortuary celebrating uh, Grandma Susan. I think that's everything. Mahalo. Hallelujah. And if you haven't noticed, Dana is here. We love you, Dana. <laughs> and uh, we've got Grandma Sue's picture right in the back there. So she will be with us always. A uh, few more announcements. We've got um, Auntie Bobby calendars, calendars and cards. If you haven't gotten them, I've seen a lot of you getting together and picking them up. If you, if you haven't and you want some Christmas calendars or New Year calendars and Christmas cards, uh, you can see Auntie Bobby after service. Um, we have cards for all occasions as well, which come in very, very handy. Uh, the next announcement is check out our website. We've got blogs up. We've got special guest writers on there as well. If you haven't had a chance, go and check them out, newhopevolcano.com. And then also we have a YouTube page. Uh, it just search for New Hope Volcano and it'll come up. And all of the services are up. I think they even have a jam session, right? From the, the worship team doing a jam session on there. But on our YouTube, I think every phone comes at YouTube now. Uh, you can just search newhopevolcano.com. And not dot com, newhopevolcano, and it'll come up in your YouTube search. And then finally on the website, there is a place to give online. Uh, if God has put it on your heart to give that way, you can go to the website. There's a little tab on the top. You click on it. You enter your information one time. Very safe um, uh, and very convenient. 
If you're here in person and you want to give, the offering bowl is in the back next to Dana. <laughs> so uh, whenever you want, you can go and drop your tithe or your offering there in the bowl. Now that being said, of course, we always like to say, we always like to make a point that if you're visiting us for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too please hold back on your money, take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you give with a cheerful heart. So if we could bow our heads this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you as, as one body, Father God, and we just want to give you thanks and praise this morning. We want to thank you for our church family. We thank you for all the prayers that have been lifted already, Father God. And we just want to lift those up who need healing this morning. We lift them up to you and we put them in your care. We put them in your hands, Father. And we just pray for your miracles to be done in their lives, Father God. Your word says there's a season for everything. And like Stacy said, there seems to be a season that's happening around us right now. And Father, I believe in this season, it's a season to trust you. That we put all of our faith, all of our hope, all of our trust in you. We lay our burdens down. We set our worries aside. And we focus our eyes on you, Father God. And what you want to do in each and every one of our lives individually. Father, we thank you for providing for us in every way. Some of us are hurting financially, others spiritually, others emotionally. But one thing is for sure, we can come to you in all of those situations. And so, Father, we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. And most importantly, we pray that you use it according to your will. Father, we just thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. We thank you for the word that we're about to hear from Pastor Ray that comes from, uh, from you, Father God, through him to our ears and our hearts. And we pray that they, your words will dwell on our hearts richly. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you in Christ Jesus' name this morning we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, you know, sometimes Pastor Jason is talking about YouTube and whatnot and like that. And, you know, I'm from a different gener generation. And so I'm trying to make my way into the YouTube. But I was very glad because I was in Seattle, Washington, far away from here, thousands of miles. But then I turn into, I turn on YouTube and then I see Ohana Young here. I saw um, Yasmi, I celebrated Yasmi's birthday. Yasmi, I was wondering, how come he had his plumeria layout? Because it was his birthday, it was a blessing to me because we were able to participate. And then the worship started, Ohana Young, and I was, Lani and I all the way out, and then she's uh, all the way thousands of miles away. Then she hears, I want to sing, sing, sing. I want to shout, shout, shout. I want to sing. I want to shout, praise the Lord. Oh, man, I'm, I, I was ministered to all the way over there just because we had the capability to put what was happening here onto the Internet. So I wanted to thank you know, Ohana Young, everybody that continued to have the services here. I give you a round of applause. It was awesome. Chris and the gang put it up so that anybody who wanted could see. So that was just fantastic. Uh, I also wanted to say a word. I've said this before, but every time I walk in the room and I see that the seasonal decoration has changed, I'm always blessed. So for the decorating angels, I want to say thanks to you guys too. We say thanks to the angels. <clears throat> Because sometimes, you know, when you walk in, it, wow, so nice. It's changed to from Father's Day to 4th of July to now we're into the harvest season. So there are fall colors. Sometimes we forget to say thank you, which I said, read Ralph, uh, Ralph Brock's blog. Try to say that three times fast. Ralph Brock's blog. Ralph Bro Brock's blog. Ralph Brock's blog three times they will help your enunciation uh, right so um this morning's message notes you have on the uh, chairs if you want them if you want something to write with uh, you can find something probably at the entry table all of the scripture verses that we're going to look at and there are a boatload of scripture verses this morning will be on those notes or up on the screen so as we have said many times here 
Um, sometimes the Lord may speak to you in a very specific way with one particular scripture, but by the time we look at so many of them, by the time you get home, you think, what was that scripture verse again? And it escapes you. So if you want to utilize the tools, please go ahead. For those of us, and there are many of us in the room, many on, on Zoom, who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we've accepted him and, and taken that grace gift of forgiveness and salvation. We've done it by faith through grace. We are called then many things in the Bible. Once we accept the free gift of salvation, we then are in a category that brings names that call, they call us specific names when we start looking at the scripture. So certainly we are going to be Christians because we're Christ followers. We're going to be called believers because we believe in Jesus Christ. We're going to be called disciples. We even, we are even exhorted to go and make, we the disciples, make disciples uh, from other uh, of with other people we are called saved we are, we are saved by grace all of those different things we are born again you have heard the story i was brought up in the episcopal church and i i so i was there and i many years as long as i lived at home with my parents and i never accepted the lord um, and so when I was out of the house and uh, just after 30 years old, 31 years old, I accepted the Lord. I was so excited and I, I spoke to my mom and I said to my mom, Mom, I accepted the Lord. I am born again. And my mom said to me, what do you mean you're born again? Remember when you were one year old, we had that, you were baptized in the Episcopal Church. We had that big luau at the church afterward. I said, well, mom, first of all, I don't remember when I was one year old. And, and, and number two is, I didn't have anything to say about it. You and daddy wanted that, but I wanted it now. And she said, oh, you're not one of those born agains, are you? I said, yeah, I am one of those born again. And I said, I'm only born again because the Bible said, unless a man is born again, they shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. I took the, I took the phrase out of the Bible. And then my mom said, okay, well, you know, in the Episcopal church, there's a, there's a book of common prayer. And so, sometimes there's scripture in there, but there's a lot of liturgy in there too. So she was shocked when I said, the Bible says, unless you are born again. That's why I'm born again. She said, oh, okay. And then she had to go check. She had, she'd been going to church for a long, long time. And she had to go and check if born again was really in the Bible. But that's what we, one of the words, one of the descriptive terms that gets assigned to us is that we are born again. Everybody who is related to Christ in that way, born again. But here's another one, and it's the focus of, of today's message. Jesus says that you and I, anybody who has received Christ as Savior and Lord, taken him as their forgiver, that we are peacemakers. Everybody please say it with me at the count of three. One, two, three, peacemakers. We are all called peacemakers. And when you think about it, peacemaker is a synonym for being a follower of Christ, that we are supposed to be known, if we are followers of Christ, we are supposed to be known as peacemakers. Jesus says in this very famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, I gave it to you in your notes, it reads this way, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the ones, and you can underline this, that God will call his children. It's a fantastic verse because it says, you are peacemakers, and by that, uh, by that description, God will call you his own. God will call you his children. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Now, in the time that we spend this morning, we're going to analyze the time in which we live. It's a very specific time with very specific challenges. I don't have to tell you how desperately we, all of us who live in this time, 
you and me included, how much we need peacemakers. You don't have to look very far. People fighting all the time. People fighting in the Walmart for who knows what they're fighting. People fighting in the airplane for any number of different reasons. It will boggle your mind. People fighting in the airplane, they need peacemakers. People are fighting in the airport. People are fighting over seats because that's the seat they wanted to sit in, but somebody else sat there. People are, are fighting because somebody in the back of them kicked them in the back of the seat and they didn't like being jostled to the front. We live in a world that needs, requires peace makers everywhere you look you don't have to look very far you see chaos you see fighting you see conflict you see it between individuals and then you see it between political parties and then you see it between nations and then you see people within the nation having conflict and when you look around you see these situations and sometimes very difficult or impossible to find anybody that will condemn that kind of behavior. You see people acting in very brutal ways and nobody around condemning that kind of brutality. It is an atmosphere that we more than ever need to turn to God and his word for direction. That's why I'm happy. Every time I hear somebody saying something up, up here, inevitably, and there too, everywhere, it inevitably leads to the word of God. I'm sitting there listening to Stacy, and, and, and she said, and the Lord spoke to me, you know, that I'm not going to get anxious. And I'm thinking, that is the word of God. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the promise is the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension, you can't understand it, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Most of the time we spend this morning will be in one central passage, James, and in chapter 3. So you'll see us refer to it again and again and again, because we're going to dissect pieces from this passage. I read to you this morning from verse number 13. If you are truly wise and uh, a truly wise and understanding person, it will be seen in your life. It will be visible by the good deeds that you do out of the humility that always comes from wisdom. God says wisdom is going to be visible. You can observe it, and you'll be able to observe it in all of your relationships. Your relationships, it says in this verse, will be bathed with wisdom and humility. Everybody please say with me, humility, ready, go. Humility, that's always got to go together. Then the verse will draw a stark contrast when it continues in this way. But if in your heart, you should underline that, you are, and they're going to give a list, selfish, jealous, bitter toward others. That's all stuff that happens in relationships. In relationships, you get jealous. In relationships, you get selfish. You get, you get bitter. That's all relationships. The verse says, don't think you are wise, meaning you're going to act that way. Don't think that that's the wise thing to do. If you're jealous, if you're envious, the Bible says that you are not acting in a wise fashion. That's not wisdom. That you might indeed be acting in a foolish way. The passage continues. Um, don't think you're wise because it's a lie, the Bible says. That's never wisdom from God when you act in those ways that we underline. Instead, it is from the world. Remember, selfishness, bitterness, jealousy, all that is from the world. And it's from your, listen to what the Bible says, your unspiritual nature. And it's from the devil himself. 
self. Now that verse doesn't mince any words. Now then James continues, this is the next verse, 16, for whenever there is envy or selfish ambition, please underline that because that's key, you will always find, now this is the amplified translation, the amplified version, and it's going to give a list. Because of envy and selfish ambition, you will always find confusion. You will always find unrest. You always find disharmony. You always find rebellion in every kind of evil. All because of envy, bitterness, jealousy, and selfish ambition. Now, I don't want to hit you all with the you know, bad news. So if there any, is there any good news? Yes, there's good news. Now that's the bad news part. Here's the good news. Beginning in verse 17. Real wisdom, it says. This is the wisdom that comes from God. And you can start underlining all of this. Real wisdom, godly wisdom is pure. Hallelujah. Then peaceful. Then considerate. Those are the benefits of this real wisdom. James says it is not devices, meaning not making problems. It's full of mercy and it's helpful. It's impartial, meaning it's not showing favoritism. And it's free from hypocrisy, meaning what you see is what you get. I'm not going to act one way, speak one way when I'm in front of you and behave in another way when I'm out of your sight. That there are two kinds of me, one for a certain occasion and another for a different occasion. No hypocrisy. It's always consistently gracious. No, it's free from hypocrisy. It continues, when peacemakers, now this is key, when peacemakers plant seeds of peace, okay, so this is the analogy, we are farmers, when we, peacemakers, we plant seeds of peace, not seeds of anger, not seeds of distrust, not seeds of impatience, when we plant seeds of peace, they will harvest, the Bible says, justice. You should underline that. There's sometimes many, many articles I read. You probably read it too. Online news services, magazines, newspapers, books, all talking about justice. Everybody wanted justice. But then if you fall, and I want justice too. I'm all for justice. But if some people say it, if you follow closely enough, you find that they're not planting seeds of peace. They want justice, but they plant seeds of anger. They plant seeds of distrust. They plant seeds of fear. And the Bible is quite clear. You're going to plant that kind of seeds. You're not going to get justice. You want justice. You want godly justice. You have to plant seeds of peace. So with just what we read, we can extract what I'm going to call this morning six very practical um, uh, keys for peaceful relationships. And this we can use in any number of ways. We can use it from, from, from a husband and wife. You can do it from sister to brother. You can do it from parent to child, child to parent, parent to grandparent. You can apply it straight across the board. All of these six, I call it keys, but then you can also call it seeds because this is what we're supposed to be planting. The first one of the six, number one, is don't compromise the truth. That's where we begin. James chapter 3, verse 17. Real wisdom is first of all, you should underline that, pure. Right from the get-go, wisdom from the Lord, real wisdom is first of all, pure. Now, what's James talking about when he says he describes that as pure? He's talking about simply always telling the truth. That every time that you speak, you are speaking the full truth. You're not holding things back. You're not uh, massaging the, the truth. You are speaking the full truth. That's what the Bible calls pure wisdom and pure truth. Proverbs chapter 15 says, The Lord delights in pure words. You should underline that. That the Lord is going to be happy when you are speaking 
the truth, not words of dishonesty. The Lord is not happy with that. Not lies that the verse already spoke about. Not, the Lord is not happy. But truth. God has a specific plan for each one of us. And that's why he says in the New Testament book of Ephesians in chapter 4. This is the message paraphrase. God wants us to grow up. He wants us to be mature. What is that maturity? To know the whole truth you can underline that he doesn't want us to be uninformed and ill-equipped he wants us to know the whole truth and look what it says next to tell it in love please underline that he wants us to know the truth he wants us to tell it in love now, sometimes we are successful with that. Other times we are not successful with that. I don't know if anybody remembers the Ginsu knife that used to be uh, advertised on TV. Anybody remember the Ginsu knife? Jason does. Anybody over here, Ginsu, some people outside here? Right. Sometimes we treat the word of the Lord like the Ginsu knife. We're not using it in love. We're saying the truth to people that are around. We're saying the truth, sharing the truth. But we're using it like the Gitsuna. We're trying to hurt them, cut them. We're not trying to love them into obedience. We're trying to hurt them. And that says we are going to be people that share the truth, God's truth. And we want to share it in love. That's why I had you underline it. Not just the truth, but the truth that we tell in love love so when we speak to people they know that our heart and our word is pure that we're not trying to trick them we're not trying to get one over on them we're not trying to you know puzzle them <coughs> we're not trying to you know manipulate anything with us they're gonna get we want this reputation they're gonna get the whole truth and nothing but the truth in God's love. Don't compromise the truth. That's the first seed. Here's the second seed. Don't antagonize the other person's anger. Meaning, if anger exists, don't antagonize that. Don't egg that on. That will work in every relationship that a human being can have. It's beneficial not to antagonize the anger of the other person, especially by the way that you or I might be telling the truth. James chapter 3 again, verse 17. Real wisdom is peaceful. You can underline it. So it's not just pure, it's peaceful. Now what does that mean? Wise people work at very diligently maintaining peace and harmony. That's why they're known as peacemakers, because they work at having these uh, descriptive terms be describing who they are and what their relationships are yielding. They're not easily offended. They don't have a chip on their shoulder walking around like they're ready to get into a fight. They're not looking for anything like that. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. Any fool can start arguments, it says in the scripture. The wise thing is to stay out of them. Any fool can start the argument. It's a wise person who dis decides, who calculates, who plans to stay away from arguments. Add to, add to that what we read now, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. A wise man controls his temper. He knows that anger causes all kinds of mistakes. Sometimes we look back on certain situations and we know that the only reason that we fouled it up 
was because we were angry, we were hasty. We made decisions that normally, if we were thinking in our right mind, we would not have done. But we were overcome with anger, we went off the deep end, we did things, we said things that we know was they were not correct, we said them anyway, and now we're left to pick up the pieces, to clean up the mess that anger led us into. We don't want those kinds of things. We don't want those kinds of mistakes. So here's, a, here's kind of a brief summary. How are we going to do that? Here's some practical ways that I think are helpful. You get into a discussion with anybody. First of all, you don't want to compare. Oh, my car is shinier than your car. My car is newer than your car. My rims are bigger than your rims. No, don't compare. My kid is smarter than your kid. No, you're going to get into a fight and you don't want to be in a fight. You want to be a peacemaker. Don't compare and don't condemn. So many fights we get into, it starts off because somebody just condemned something else. Don't do that. Don't contradict. The way to peace is to listen carefully, empathetically, start to inject the truth of the Lord. Pure words. Pure words. Don't do those other things. Wisdom, it's kind of like this for me. I don't know if you can apply it this way too, I guess. Wisdom to me, in the practical sense, is deciding what to overlook. Because you know, you all know, I was just on holiday, okay? You want to get in a fight with anybody, go to the airport. Oh, you can fight with anybody. Everywhere you look, you can fight with people. You can fight with the porters at the, at the sidewalk. You can fight with the people that cut in front of you. You can fight with TSA, you know, who ignore you and make like you speak in a language from another planet. You can fight with the people. You can fight with anybody. But wisdom, to me, is deciding what to overlook. In the, in, the, in the whole scheme of things, in God's whole economy, does it really matter that this couple just cut in line to, you know, for, the, for the water fountain? Does it really matter that they cut in line? My conclusion is no. That's, to me, that's godly wisdom because that helps me to decide what to overlook. Okay, so that's number two. Here's the third seed or the third key. Don't minimize other people's feelings. Don't do that. That's the third seed to plant. The Bible says real wisdom is considerate. Please underline that. The living Bible of that same verse says real wisdom is courteous, means doing the right thing. Today's English version, the same verse says real wisdom is, look how they describe it, gentle with people. And all of those, whichever one you choose, means being mindful of the feelings of the other people. How do they feel? How do they look at certain things? How do they process what we are doing or what we are saying? Being considerate, mindful of them. That's all. Sometimes people try to make consideration of others very mysterious. It's not mysterious at all. It's just being open and, and acknowledging, being aware of the other person's feelings. Further, the scripture would say to us in Romans chapter 15, we who are strong ought to bear the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Means we're supposed to be outgoing to those. Each of us, it continues, should, and you can underline this, should please his neighbor for his good to build him up. We should do that. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it's written, the insults of those who insulted you fell on me. Now that may happen to you, that you pay the price for something that you did not do or something that you had no part of, yet 
You have to pay the price. You receive the insults for something that you didn't do. I was exposed a little bit to this early, early on. Um, so my father was with the police department almost his whole working career. I was a young kid. There are some people that didn't care for the police at all. So on the playground, other kids, my peers, would throw insults, call names, and all kinds of things to me. I didn't really know what this was about. I didn't know how to process it. Unfortunately, I'm a hothead just like them. So you want to get sideways with me, I don't care. I'm going to attack you. And I attack, I attack guys my own size, bigger, smaller, girls. I don't care. I attack everybody. But it was all because this, this principle was coming to fruition, that some people were receiving insults for something that they had nothing to do. That's what Jesus is speaking about. He suffered for something he didn't have anything to do with. Our sins, he didn't have anything to do with it, yet he suffers for that. Our shortcomings, <coughs> he suffers for that. That's what that's uh, referring to. Our exhortation <coughs> in all of these circumstances would be to be Christ-like. In almost every circumstance, that's where it would start. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to be Christ-like like especially since genesis in a chapter uh, sorry galatians chapter 6 says carry each other's burdens please underline that it tells us in that verse specifically what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be helping other people carrying their burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of christ now, what's the law of Christ? Everybody in your most quizzical voice say, what's the law of Christ? Everybody at the count of three. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. That was so quizzical. I mean, it's, beyond, uh, it's beyond quizzical. What's the law of Christ? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. So let's just review, there's three C's. You really want to be a peacemaker in the world, and I'm going to assume we do. Then we've got to be wise in your relationships. We know that. You don't want to compromise the truth. You want to be telling the truth. You don't want to antagonize somebody else's anger. You don't want to minimize their feelings. You don't want to be saying things like, oh, get over it. No, don't say things like that. Which brings us to key number four. Don't criticize the other person's suggestions. When they come to you with a suggestion, an idea, something they're going to float before the, you and the other people, don't criticize that. Real wisdom, the Bible says, is not defensive. Please underline that. The Revised Standard Translation, that same verse, says that you're going to be open to reason that you're not going to be defensive the living bible says this is going to allow real real wisdom allows discussion and is willing get this part to yield to others the king james version which i didn't give you this morning says it's easily entreated that's the descriptive term they use it speaks of people who listen to each other people that have a discussion with no other motive than to listen at what the other person is saying that we are open and not defensive that uh, that conversation can, can occur with us without us, you know, f uh, taking a defensive posture. Like, why did you say that? Well, you don't like the way I'm running things? No, not defensive. Open, the Bible says in many different ways. Open to discussion. Willing to hear what others have to say. Open to reason and to, and to uh, understanding not defensive. Proverbs chapter 12, fantastic verse. A fool thinks he needs no advice, but a wise man listens to 
others. The fact of the matter is that no matter what we think, even if we think we have the perfect solution, that scripture says, you'd be a fool to think that you don't need any more advice. I didn't say it. The Bible says it. But a wise man or woman, and that's what we hope to be, listens to others. Don't criticize other people's suggestions. That's key number four. Here's key number five. Don't emphasize the other person's mistakes. Not like the praise band when we make mistakes. Oh, Randy, what caught us that? What key was that? Oh, I think that was car key. That was the... <laughs> no, we don't want to emphasize the other person's mistakes. Again, James 3, verse 17. You're going to be, you, you will, by the time we get finished with this, you're going to be experts at James 3, verse 17, because we looked at it time and time and time and time and time again. Here it is, James 3, verse 17. This is the next phrase in that verse. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, is, it says, full of mercy, you can underline that, and it's helpful, full of mercy, and it's helpful, which is to say it is for, it, it's forgiving kind of wisdom. That it means to say that, that it's gracious. It means to say that we are extravagant when we relate with other people. The Bible says that mercy is a mark of wisdom, that the more mercy we show, the more wisdom we display. That's what the Bible would lead us to. Giving when, when people are in need, that's showing godly wisdom. Not what they deserve. We give what they need. That's mercy. Proverbs chapter 17. This is the Living Bible. It says in verse 9, Love forgets mistakes. Love forgets mistakes. Nagging about them parts the best of friends. Means even if your relationship was solid, you keep nagging, 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 nagging. Pretty soon, brrr, chasm starts to appear. Greater space, greater space. Pretty soon, your friendship, your relationship is damaged and broken up. And maybe it, it just seems impossible to fix it. All because of this one thing. That you kept nagging. You kept emphasizing a mistake. It's time to overlook that. Put a period at the end of that chapter. Move on to the next chapter. Let the Lord repair it. Let the Lord rejuvenate it. Let him replenish if that's what was necessary. And move on. The Lord would say to us in many, many situations, let it go. Let it go. Go. Proverbs chapter 15 and in verse 4 says, Kind words bring life. You should underline that because he makes a contrast next. But cruel words crush your spirit. And I bet you anything you can think of specific examples in your own life without even sharing it with anybody where that came to fruition that when you were spoken to in a kind encouraging building fashion like good teachers would speak to their parents like chris wolfgang would speak uh, to her students pupils sorry then you know what that experience is like and unfortunately maybe we know what the other part is Cruel words, when we receive cruel words, cruel comments, words of condemnation, words of anger, crush your spirit. And maybe a lot of us took a long time to get that crushed spirit repaired. Maybe it took a long time for it to heal. Maybe it's still not healed. If it's still not healed, you better come Friday night. Celebrate recovery. You can't get healed. You can be accelerated in the healing process. If you want peace in your relationship, maybe the great advice is stop bringing it up. Don't talk about it anymore. Whatever it is, perhaps, I'm not saying it's applicable all across the board, 
But I am saying that it may be applicable in some situations. That's it. Don't bring it up, whatever it is. Don't emphasize the other person's mistakes. And then here's the last C, the last key. Don't despise our differences. Don't despise our differences. This is one of the great things. I mean, I can only speak from my perspective because I'm, a, I'm born in Hawaii. Um, I am a native Hawaiian. Uh, I have not lived my life anywhere else for any, any extended period of time. And so sometimes I have joked with other people, like on vacation, you meet certain people, you say, oh, let's have a meal together and this and that. And I said, oh, and they said, oh, is it still, is there really racial tension? I said, well, I don't know. In, in Hawaii, they want to know since I'm a resident. I said, well, I don't know. It's very difficult to, to put your finger on it. Um, I had classmates, uh, Kapono and Keola Beamer. Kapono Beamer is the same class as me. Um, his brother is one year older. They wrote a song, and in that song, they made fun of every single, na oh, not every single, of many different nationalities, many ethnicities, Filipinos, Chinese, Japanese, and whatnot. And I said, I said to the people I was speaking to, they said, oh, about Native Hawaiian, you are against the white people. I said, well, you know, I got a great grandfather who is from Wales. Are you not going to get any more white than that? <laughs> oh, really? I said, yeah, I got another grandfather, great grandfather, who is from Germany. Oh, Deutschland. Okay, so if I start with this, then I, it's hard to, you know, criticize, because I'll be criticizing myself. I'm Hawaiian, and I'm also a German, and I'm also Welsh, I'm English. Oh, yeah, and I'm also, my grandfather came from Leyte in the Philippines. I'm also a Filipino. So, you know, it, and, and it's not unusual. Everybody walking around in Hawaii generally is, you know, more than one ethnicity. And so because of that, in my opinion, we don't really take notice, you know, if there's brown people, white people, yellow people, what, what, we don't really notice because we're all the same people, which is not the case in many other places in the world. There are people that despise other people for differences, sometimes only skin color, only ethnicity. Sometimes it's just because they may come from another state, like South Carolinians going to talk about North Carolinians, like uh, Oregonians going to say to Californians, don't come up here, stay home. You know, things like that. There starts to become uh, an animosity because people start amplifying the differences. James chapter 3, verse 17 says, real wisdom is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. Free from prejudice and hypocrisy. That's today's English version. First Peter chapter two says in verse 17, show proper respect to everyone. Everyone, even if you don't like them, you got to show proper respect in order for your relationship to have a chance to flourish. In order for your peace of mind, you got to do what we know we're supposed to do, which is to show proper respect to everyone, even to the people that we might say don't deserve our respect. We are still obligated because we are children of the Most High. You can hear Pastor Moku saying that. He said it a thousand times. We are children of the Most High. Thereby, therefore, we are called to behave as His children ought to behave. This verse says, showing proper respect to everyone. Add to that what you would read in Romans, now in chapter 15. Accept, and you can correct your notes, it should say, accept each other then. Accept each other then. Just as Christ accepted you. He didn't throw the barricade up in front of you. 
He didn't throw the barrier up in front of you. And he asked us not to do that to other people, that we won't throw the ethnic barrier up or we won't throw the politeness barrier. We won't throw the etiquette barrier up in front of everybody else because we don't like the way they talk. We don't like the way they, you know, the, their voice is too loud. We don't like the way that they act. We don't like the way they do or don't discipline their children. Don't put the barrier up because Christ didn't put the barrier up for us. Just as Christ accepted you. Now, here's how that verse ends. In order to bring praise to God. That's why we're doing what we do in our relationships. Because that peaceful relationships, relationships that are bathed with wisdom, that's what brings glory to God. That's how we honor God. That's how we worship God is by doing the things like this, accepting each other, doing the things that he's said. I give you one more scripture verse and then we'll end. The Bible says in Colossians, this is the second chapter and in verse three, the secret to wisdom is Christ himself. So if you listen to all that was said today, and you are thinking, I want peaceful relationships. The secret is, if you have Christ, great. You don't have Christ, get Christ. Because that's step number one. The secret to wisdom is Christ himself. If you already have Christ and you want peaceful relationships, then get more of Christ. The Bible says that the secret to wisdom is Christ himself. It says, in him lie all of God's hidden treasures of wisdom. In him we find all of these treasures. The secret to wisdom is not a principle as the internet would have you believe. It's not a process. It's not a protocol as others might have you believe. It's not a precept. That's not what the Bible teaches. It's a person. The secret to wisdom the Bible teaches is a person. Jesus the Christ. And whatever we need, wherever we need, Christ is the answer. To use the term that the young people use these days, he got you. If what you need, you allow him to come in, then he's got you. Whatever it happens to be, he's got you. All your needs, and if you want peace in your relationships and you want peace in the world, the starting point is really to invite the Prince of Peace, that's Jesus, into your life and circumstance. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to gather this morning. We thank you that you've allowed us to dig into this passage of scripture, Lord. We're all going to be experts in James chapter 3, verse 17. They're going to be a quiz next week. James chapter 3, verse 17. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us about this very, very important part of our existence and more importantly, our call as believers, our call as your children, that we are to be known as peacekeepers. That is, if there be anybody in the group that's leading the peacekeeping mission, then it's going to be us. That that is why you put us here. We're on a peacekeeping mission. First, we want to make peace with you, and then we want to make peace with everybody around us. Let that be true, Lord. We pray it in Jesus Christ's name. Congregation, before we get ready to close, I just want to be sure that everybody has had an opportunity to receive Christ. I told you, just as we were sharing that last scripture, 
The secret to wisdom is Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Christ right now, let's attack that as priority number one. Whether you're here in person or whether you're watching on uh, virtual online, um, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, let's go after that first. I'm not sure why it is this way, but it's not that important now. What the important part is, is if you sense anything of the Lord, if you sense anything of Him reaching out to you, 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 you sense anything of His love for you, His concern for you, say yes to Him. You got everything to gain and nothing to lose. I'm going to give you a way to do that in just the next few moments. Um, we're going to, there are many ways you could do this, but we're going to say a prayer. I'll say it. I'll say it um, uh, aloud. You can say it silently in your heart. Just say it silently in your heart, but I'll pray for you. And I'll be praying a prayer that you, have, as your heart is open, that you would have Christ come in, that you're open right now. Pray silently in your heart, and I'll pray aloud. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these here in person or those watching online on Zoom live now on, on October 10th that they are open now for you and they want to have you be a part of their lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would honor the desires of their heart, that as they reach out to you, Lord, you would do what only you can do, come into their lives. You said, Lord, that if it was open, you would abide in them, that you'd love to have them abide in you. Let that be true now, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. We pray that you come in now, Lord, that you indwell them, that they would know, Lord, confirm that beyond a shadow of a doubt, they're starting their new relationship with you. Bless them richly, Lord, in many, we pray that you bless them in very definitive ways as they begin their walk with you, so that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's the best decision that not only they could make, that any human being could make, is to, to open their lives to you. Come into their lives now, Lord, we pray. And we thank you in advance, Lord, for the blessing that you are giving them. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would bless all the congregation, all the virtual congregation online, all of the congregation gathered here in the room or out on the lanai. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bathe us with your mercy, with your grace, with your presence, Lord, that we would, over all things, in our relationships and all other things, that we would be Christ-like. Let that be the standard, Lord, that we would be Christ-like and that people would recognize that in order that you would be glorified. It'll be our sacrifice of worship to you. We thank you in advance, Lord. Be with us in this next coming week, we pray. Everybody in the room, and on the lanai, please help me close by saying amen, amen and amen, amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the conclusion, formal conclusion of our morning service. We want to thank you all who have come in person and all of you who have tuned in on Zoom. If you are here in person and you receive Christ for the first time this morning, we want to encourage you to stop and see Chris, the lovely lady standing at the door. She has a, a Bible for you, brand new Bible. You don't want to start your walk with the Lord without the map. You need the map. Take it. She's happy to give it to you. In addition, if you are studying the Bible and for some reason you already have lost your Bible, something has occurred, you need a new Bible, I think if you ask her nicely, she'd be happy to get one to you. Actually, if you walk by there and you're smiling, she's giving you a Bible. Let's put it that way. Okay? So anybody that needs one, just be sure that you see her. We're going to sing one more song this morning. If you feel like you want to sing, stay around and sing. If you feel like you want to start visiting as soon as I walk away from this microphone you can start visiting with each other uh, if you are going to head out still looking kind of cloudy but all right that's the way it is um, uh, we want to say have a great rest of your week whatever you decide God bless you richly
Okay, we're singing this song. song. that we started the morning off with. Check. Okay, so this says, There no greater love than Jesus. There no greater love than He gives. There no greater than the freedom. So deep with Him. Let's do it again. There no greater love than He So deep within We praise your name We praise your name Send in all of your never ending love Love so great That it covers all my sin and shame No greater power There is no greater force in all the the strength of his love and his love endures forever unchanging always true and his love endures forever forever for all time yes his love endures forever love divine say thank you now Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Here's the last one. Thank you for your love, dear Jesus. Thank you for your love. God bless you, everybody. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than He gives. There's no greater love that frees us. So deep within, sing joy. There's no greater joy than Jesus. 